back to our episode, our new episode of Back to Basics. I am Mowal Husseini and I am here with my good friend George Elias. How are you, George? How are you doing? Great. Super excited to be here in an actual studio instead of doing yeah. it from our homes. Yeah. Uh, can you believe this is our 21st episode? Wow. So for those who don't know what George was talking about, we've done about 20 episodes or so voice podcast so this is our first video one yeah it's fun yeah first time we're uh, face to face yeah how's the summer treating you the hundred degree weather daily <laughs> it, temp it, well you know i like my summers hot my winter's cold so yeah, i'm okay with it but uh it does present challenges with uh trying to get outdoors and work out and whatnot i know i know, I know. so what, what have you been up to nothing just a couple of summer classes and i'm doing uh my usual coaching How, how's that been going for you it's going well. It's going well. Really, no complaints. You know, one idea or one topic I was thinking about for today, and tell me if you, I, I know we had ended with a different topic last time. So I was thinking that we could maybe talk about limiting beliefs, limiting thoughts in a business setting, right? How they impact the decisions that we make, the opportunities that we take. What do you think of that as a topic? I think it's a great topic. Shall we talk about that? Sure. Do you have any examples? Do you know what made me really think about it? A couple of clients that I had that I was visiting over the past couple of weeks, right? I noticed, besides the task of the work part, right? I realized that they're assessing their activity, their opportunities. More, they're defining them more by limitations versus their potential. So they were thinking about what parameters limit me from doing this or nah, you know, I can't do this well, this is too much, mm. right? Most of it I noticed was subjective. Like they were limiting themselves from doing things, not objectively, but based upon notions and ideas that they had in their mind mm. that I was listening to them and I thought it's not real. Right? Me knowing them and knowing what their potential is, I felt like they were limiting themselves in ways that is unrealistic. And I'll give you an example. You were just asking about an example. A very simple example. A sales manager was talking to me and he was telling me, we're talking about how they can revise their customer acquisition strategy. What do you guys use? And I'll just call him Joe. What do you guys use, Joe? Well, we do A, B, C, and D. Do you do any phone calls? No, we can't make any phone calls. We can't cold call prospects. It doesn't work for us. And he wouldn't even discuss it, right? And I was thinking about, well, maybe cold calling prospects doesn't work, but what if you define prospects as people that you've met at a networking event, people that know you, and you try to call them, right? The fact that you've called somebody once and they didn't pick up their phone, maybe because they're busy out of town, doesn't shut down the idea that maybe you can call them again or that you can try it with someone else, right? That's, that's the most recent example I can think of. What are your thoughts? No, well, so, you know, it's interesting that, that you're bringing this up in, in the context you're bringing it up because, uh, you know, a lot of times in business, you know, our thoughts and our beliefs and our mindset really uh, cause us to be biased. And, I um, agree. And, and actually limits us from maybe considering uh, um, possible solutions or alternatives. Um, and it'll also uh, cause us sometimes to pick the wrong alternative just because uh, we may believe or have some sort of thought that we can't do it that way, right? Or we can't do it at all. Or we can't do it at all. I or, agree with you. Or who, who says that you tried it before, but did you try it in the right way, right? So these, and these beliefs and thoughts, uh, they tend to be um, reinforcing uh, uh, on themselves. So, you know, once you have this belief or thought or mindset in your head that you can't do something or you're not good at something mm -hmm. or something's not achievable, the fact that you never try means that you're right. Yeah. You're, you're, you actually became... I agree with you. You actually become correct yeah. in your assessment, right? Take it from the first step before you even, because I agree 100% that it starts as like an organic virus that will keep growing, mm -hmm. right? As time goes by, you're reinforcing it over and over and over, and it, it becomes its own entity pushing you down that, right, that belief. But take it from st the first step. What do you think 
causes that limiting belief? Yeah, so, um, so like what creates belief? I think that there's a there's um, a lot of causes. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, my instant thoughts of what causes belief. I go to childhood, mm -hmm. right? And I think about um, parents and um, how they talk to their children or teachers or something of that nature. And you know, to give you an example, yeah. let, let's say um, some kid tries to play basketball for the first time, comes home and just is distraught because they didn't do so well, mm -hmm. right? The other kids on, on, the, on the court were better. And the mom or the dad or, you know, a friend says, that's okay, basketball's not your thing, Yeah. right? That's a limiting idea. That's a limiting thought, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And to, to me, that sort of seeds that kid with a thought, well, basketball's not my thing. And they start. They, they may actually believe, believe it, and, it yeah. and 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 to me, there's even levels of belief, right? There's maybe top level service beliefs, but then there's there's certain beliefs that may become very deep in in, in your conscious. And let's say that basketball ex example, while well, maybe that spawns into, I'm just not athletic, right? And then you just stop I, athletics it, in general. Well, because now you don't work out, now you don't try. You're right. Mm -hmm. At that point, you become unathletic. Yes. Right. So, you know, the, these sorts of things come up and sometimes they're well intentioned. Right. Like, you know, this adult or this mentor or parent was saying it in a way to try to comfort this child. Right. But because of that impression, it spawns. And the same thing happens in business. Yeah. Right. Somebody tells you you can't do that or we've tried that. We've been there. It can become a surface belief or it can become a deeply held belief. The deeper that belief is held, the harder it is to to change or Break affect, of it. and th those beliefs start affecting your mindset. So if you have limiting beliefs, you may start having things like a negative mindset, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And then that mindset creates thoughts and actions and actually changes your entire reality because you actually perceive everything through that mindset, right? So it's a conviction that you get that you're Mm -hmm. So that the, the sad part is that example you brought of when you're consulting. Yeah. Well, I can't cold call. I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, at some point, that person has just boxed themselves in, right? I can't do anything. I am now stuck in this situation. And they're calling the consultant to tell them how they can succeed inside that box, yep. right? Within their limitations. And you're saying, who built that wall? You did. Mm-hmm. Right. They limited them themselves. Yeah. Right. So the the interesting part about this is as a manager, as a leader, you can limit yourself and have these limited mindsets. You can actually create your team. To limit themselves, it cascades down it, to your team. Absolutely. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. You know, the same thing That's what I with, see. with families, right? Fa fa families just end up having deeply held beliefs. We're just an unathletic family. I, I'm just using the same yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. We're an unathletic family. Well, because they never try, they never work at it. Yeah. They're right. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, imagine if they could figure out how to get out of that belief, out of that mindset, and actually work out and try to become athletic. Chances are they would be then. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the same thing with business. If you perceive there's barriers that you can't overcome and you convince yourself you won't overcome them right i agree i agree uh, well said from my humble experiences the origin of it that i noticed that, and we talked about this i think in one of our first episodes i see it when i'm talking to you and i'm not saying you but when i'm talking to one of my clients a friend a person someone else what formulates their limitations or how they think of themselves and their potential is, I would think of it maybe something they're born with, genetics, right? May I'm not tall enough. I can't do anything about it. I can't play basketball, for example. Or, so it's something like hereditary, something that you get from a role model, somebody that, you know what, you're growing up when you're still in your teens and you look at somebody, wow, this person, that's who I want to be. I want to be like Mike. Right, like Mike Jordan, remember when we were in college, that was a commercial that came out. And the third one, your experiences that you start developing as you grow, right? I usually think those three areas is what defines how we will limit ourselves. 
Now, there's the whole idea, too, that do I even believe in limitations? I know you take a lot of, I don't want to say risks, calculated risks in your athletic life, and you always we talk about it a lot, and it's very impressive, right? You do believe in pushing that limit. But some people, A, they're just destined to be, this is, these are my limitations, this is my comfort zone, I'm going to live in it, right? And within that, they set their standards based upon what they're born with, what their family, like you're talking about, the experiences they get from their families or the role models, right? Mm. And they define everything that they do and they take it to work. They, they follow the same mentality at work that they do at home. Mm. Do you see what I mean? So I think it marries, it intersects with what you're talking about. But that was my starting point of how I started thinking about it. What is it that leads people to say, that's my limit? right? This is what I can do. I'm a risk taker. I'm not, I'm not a risk taker and so on. Yeah. So some of that, I, I agree with you, may have to do with some uh, nature right? yeah. and some of mm -hmm. it may have to do with learned responses yeah. right? or um, observation. Um, I think, well, first, let, let, me, let me just take this approach and then we'll get back Tell to me. your limitations, knowing your limits isn't necessarily a terrible thing altogether, True. right? Mm -hmm. When they're realistic, yes, right? Like, you know, un understanding something that's dangerous and my limit is to not hurt myself mm -hmm. or do something that's just, you know, uh, gonna really break things, yes. right? No knowing cause harm. To cause harm, no knowing your limits, uh, that's not what we're talking about here. We're, we're talking about limits that are self-imposed. Right. Like, like, I agree. Like that's mm -hmm. that's, you know, and you're right. I do test those beliefs and those limits in, in in various ways, whether it's running or doing obstacle course races or trying martial arts and mm -hmm. things like that. And I do it because I want to uh, get better and be better tomorrow. So part of that is more of a, you know, I'll introduce this, I, a growth mindset. Yes. Right? Right? That, that's a growth mindset. So, um, you know, one of the things that was introduced to me was this idea of in order to be an expert at something, it takes about 10,000 hours, uh -huh. right? So if you want to be a, a, a pianist, yeah. it's about 10,000 hours. You want to be really an expert at the guitar or running, you have to put 10,000 hours into it. That means eight hours a day, five years, right? So that's mm. the type of effort. So it takes a long time to get into that. That period of learning and growing, that can be hard. Yeah. Especially if it's athletics or trying to play the piano. If you try to put me on the piano at first, I'm not going to be that good. Yeah. It's going to take years before I can play something that I'm going to be happy with. Right? Yeah. I, 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 and yeah. I think that period is hard. I think it's the same thing with business. It takes a long time to know your, your way and your limits and what you need to do in business, right? It, that, that's 10,000 hours. Now, if you've gone through that 10,000 hours and you're like, man, I'm still not good, that's not my thing, maybe that's a limit that's, that's mm -hmm. justified, mm -hmm. right? But, but to me, that's the litmus test, right? Because until you've put the effort into it, maybe that could be your thing if you tried. Let me ask you something, because I don't know if I agree or disagree with you, but I want to ask the question first. So you're saying the limiting belief is something and me and a task situation limiting myself is something else? I, I think that the You don't the think they're limiting, connected? I think the limiting thought yes. com comes comes about sometimes either from other people who prompt you with it, right? Mm -hmm. Or I think there's times where you self limit yourself because things are hard. But don't you think that leads into whether or not you test your limits within a task? So it depends on your personality, right? So me I, you know, I'm I'm a type of person where I think something's hard, mm -hmm. and I get excited over the challenge. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's something in me that says I like this challenge. It's it's a challenge. It's a puzzle. It's something that I need to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because I enjoy that piece of it. You enjoy right? taking a challenge because I, of your personality I, type. I, I yeah. enjoy it. Not everybody enjoys that. True. Right. And mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm just pointing out. That if you if you want to be good at something, typically it takes effort 
mo most people don't walk into something and just be good. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at the people that are good at things, maybe there's an ounce of natural talent, maybe there's an ounce, but they practice that all the time. You know, I, I was thinking, so, so you know, um, uh, you know, my day job, I'm, I'm an engineer. Mm -hmm. I think to myself, from when I grew up, I played Legos. I took things apart. I took, a, I, on you my took own. took my phone apart. I, 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 you, you know I did that, <laughs> yes, I right? <laughs> I, I'm a, I tinker, and I like to know how things work. I've been doing that since I was like two years old, mm -hmm. right? You know, if you, I put in more than 40 years of thinking about how the world worked and things work, it's hard to compete with somebody who's, who's younger than, you know, if somebody yes. who's younger than me doesn't have as much experience and didn't put that much effort into it, how do they know how everything works then, right? Yeah. They, they just don't have the experience, right? It's the same thing with soccer, same thing with business, right? If you have parents that are entrepreneurs and business people, and every day at the, the dinner table they talk about business, what are the kids learning? They're learning about business. They're learning about relationships. They naturally, even in childhood, start getting good at it. Think about us. Let's think about because you said yeah, ten thousand hours. Uh, I agree. That's just. But let's keep it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's keep it simple. We uh, in the same manner, mm -hmm. formulating a habit or breaking a habit takes two to three weeks, right, to break a habit. Usually, on average, that's what it takes to to change it. Mm -hmm. So to change a habit mm -hmm. in the same logic, right? If I believe that I can't stop smoking, that my father used to drink, so now I have to drink and I can't break out of that cycle. Mm -hmm. I'm using some just general, like the first example that comes mm -hmm. to my mind, but my, my, my dad was athletic. He used to run every day in the morning. I can or I cannot, right? Making those decisions. That also falls under the limiting belief uh, completely, right? completely, and, and I again, I think we naturally come up with these limiting beliefs, and some are not terrible, yeah. right? Some, some, some are not terrible. Some could be good and life saving, even. But in the case of I can't stop smoking, or I can't mm -hmm. lose weight, or I can't do do things like that, the fact of the matter is, if you actually believe you can't, that then it becomes true, yes. right? But if but that's if what you, I meant. Yeah. But if you were able to catch yourself in that mindset and say, hey, that's a limiting mindset, and say, how can I change, right? Maybe you'd have a chance. And and what we could talk some other time about. I was gonna about, say, let's, we'll, we'll, how about, do we counter it? Yeah. We'll talk about that in the next episode. But I, uh, we're on the same page. We're on the same page with what you're talking about. What was, go ahead. But, but just one more thing. I think the limiting beliefs are sometimes a self-defense mechanism. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You're afraid that if you were to try and put yourself out out there on it, you might find out that you fail, right? And that's hard, right? So, so your defensive mechanism is to just say that I'm not. I'm not going to do it. Okay. I'm processing what you're saying, but yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. And here's now, if we take it the next step, right? I am a manager. I am a VP. I have my team of eighty people. Now imagine you go into a job with that mentality, what kind of culture that creates for your team, mm. right? That's one extreme. On the other hand, if I walk out of this building and I look at it and you tell me, Mo, let's push this building one block down, I know we can't do it, right? I'll be like, you're crazy, Georgie, we can't do that. I figured it out. <laughs> I know you would. <laughs> but you know what I mean though, right? Like you wouldn't be able to do it. But if you ask me to take on a project, right? Because I'm trying to take it to show like where mm. the limit is that you mentioned yeah. before. You asked me, Mo, take on this project that I've never done before. I also need to know when to say yes to something and when to say no. I don't want to take a bigger bite than I can chew mm. because I see it work in both ways in businesses, right? Sometimes, yes, I'm too scared to take the risk but sometimes some people take on things that's yeah. too big for them and it backfires. So, so that's true, but some level of risk is important to be able to take in business. And that's the if, question, what right? is if that, you, if you how far? I, I, so so I'd, I would say in that case, like in the example of I've never done something like this before, you know, I think um, you know, my advice to that individual would be something like, be honest with that person who's tasking you. Say, hey, I've never tasked you know, done 
something like this before, I might need some extra but guidance. But that's the thing. What if you don't even know? That's my point. Like, imagine this. And I don't mean to interrupt you, but to take mm -hmm. it so you can properly analyze it. You're my boss. You tell me, Mo, we need somebody to manage the new our new sales team in Japan. Mm -hmm. We're putting you there. Can you handle it? Yes, sir, I can. I've never been out of Jersey or mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. I've never been out. I, so I don't know for me to come and tell you, right, what questions to ask or what even to talk about because I delusionally think that I can do it. So I, I would say if I tasked you with something like that, um, I would maybe have a problem as a supervisor, right? So, so There so, you go. So, That's so my I, point. So that I, should be on the manager to actually be able to read the person. That that that's true, but that but let's say I tasked you with something mm -hmm. like that, and you're, and let's just switch it up a little bit. Let's say you had the belief that I've never been out to Japan. I don't know how they do sales. I, I you know you have that limiting mindset. It it should be my job to explain to you why you are a good fit for that, and to objectively lay it out. Hey, you have these other good qualities. I understand that's a stretch for you. We're going to get you help in that aspect. So, mm -hmm. so you can learn, here, here's a book to read, here's how they look at it, here's some background information, and it should be my job as supervisor to help you through that. And my, I agree. And my point is that sometimes, because we took it, we talk about limiting beliefs and it being a toxic, a negative culture, right? We talked about that. And cascading down to your team, if I'm mm -hmm. the kind of person that always limits myself mm -hmm. then ch versus challenging myself. But on the other hand, right, if I do have an individual that I'm assigning him or her to do something, mm -hmm. I have to realize if they are that kind of pessimistic, very cautious, whatever you want to call it, kind of person, or if they're one type of person that always puts themselves, challenges themselves with risks without properly assessing it. So as a manager, I have to be able to read both types of uh, individuals. So I completely agree. So I was working on a, a, a proposal response, mm -hmm. right, for in business. This is a, actually a true story. And uh, one of the main engineers on, on the program came to our stand-up meetings. We have quick 15-minute stand-up meetings to talk about how it goes. And every word that came out of his mouth was negative. Mm -hmm. Every reason why we can't get there, we can't do this, we can't do that, we can't do this, right? Yeah. He just listed, you know, he, he had a whole dozen of them, right? And I, I said, stop, stop. I said, I don't want to hear any more about why we can't do it. I only want to hear reasons why we can. Hmm. And the whole room changed. Yeah. The whole room changed. And everybody started explaining the background we had, this and that, and the timeline. You know that we won that? We actually won that. Nice. Right? Hmm. And it was because the whole team stopped having the pictures in their heads of failure and, and started the whole team started thinking about about how they're going to win. Visualizing the success. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I agree. One individual coming with negative thoughts, they're infectious, right? And it can it can affect not just, you know, them as an individual, it can affect the team, it can affect the company, it can and it can affect the nation. It can affect hum humanity in itself. So yeah. mm -hmm. I know one of the examples that I had told you about was about flight, right? So I've recently read a book on the Wright brothers. What I find amazing is prior to the Wright brothers' first flight in that Wright flyer, there was a, a belief, mankind-wide, like worldwide belief, that lighter-than-air flight for human beings was impossible. Mm. There were scientific papers published saying that it's impossible. Scientists were going around saying, you can't fly. Mm. People, they're not meant to, they can't. Too much weight, it'll, it'll never happen. Once the Wright brothers did it and it got out, it's like 50 years later, there was commercial aircrafts. I mean, the speed at which it went, yeah, it, right? It, so it somehow, Leonardo da Vinci was writing, doing drawings of mm -hmm. flying machines. I think he believed that it was gonna be one day possible. Somewhere along, along the way, there was some limiting belief that became infectious across humanity. And then once it was realized you could do it, bam. And it, and it happens all the time, the four minute mile. Right? People believe it was physically impossible for a human being to run a mile in four minutes. One person did it. Next year, everybody was doing sub four minute miles. Mm -hmm. right? Th this, 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 does that mean 
that they couldn't before? I would say no, they could before. But this limiting belief, e even across worldwide, yeah. stops people from breaking through something, right? So I, I actually believe that there's a lot of limiting beliefs us as human beings have that limit humanity in general. So, and I think that uh, you know the folks listening to this podcast, if you're a human being and you're listening, you're amazing, hmm. right? And you should believe that you're amazing and you should believe that you can achieve even more than you think. So if you put your mind to it and you work hard, that's achievable. I, mean, I, I always knew that I was amazing. So. You are. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, right? think about this. So the point is that we're trying to make that that negative state of mind mm. could be as a starting point, a mental block in our mind that stops us from doing this, doing this, doing this, doing this, doing Absolutely. this. So the idea is as a concept, before we even get into different examples, right? As a concept, people should, as a starting point, believe what, that there's no such thing as a negative state of mind. There is something being, there is being cautious, there is something being calculating in the risks that you're taking, but we should not kind of like the example you talk about, because I see this all the time, you sit in a meeting, People hate change. We know that in the business world, people, and that's why we have like change managers. People <laughs> hate change, right? They don't want to go from one thing. And I've seen this all the time when we used to build customer master mm. databases. People don't want to go from the old school way to the new way. And it's probably going to be faced a lot with AI, right? So we know people hate change. But where was I going with this? But the idea is that it's one thing to properly calculate that change and see where it's going right, to assess it versus from the beginning saying, ah, no, I'm not going to do this. I don't even want to try this, right? People have to understand that there's, to look at the potential in something and not the limitation in it. So, yeah, so, I mean, I, again, I don't want to get too far into, like, the countermeasure for, for the limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. but, again, they're infectious, they make you biased, um, they, those limiting thoughts become, change your whole mindset. So you look through the world yep. through, through this mindset of limitation. Um, it can grow beliefs. Those beliefs can get deep rooted and reinforce your thoughts. And Generations to come. It, it can, right? It, it can. So I don't want to get into the countermeasures so much, but truthfully, just identifying that limit, limiting ideas and limiting beliefs and limiting mindsets exists. Mm -hmm is a good thing, right? So folks should be asking themselves, am I limiting myself, right? And I'm biased and I'm limiting myself for, for some unknown reason? Yeah. Or is this a true limit, right? Is, exactly. Is, is this a true physical world limit that, you know, is just not pra practically overcome, you know, does yes. that make sense? It, it, and actually, I think that is the best way to conclude this episode, which is the one takeaway I would give the people watching or listening is to ask themselves when they do see something as a challenge or something that they used to say no to, to think about why are they thinking it's impossible or difficult or whatever the word is, right? Why are they saying that? To look at it objectively versus subjectively based upon their past, based upon a perception, based upon et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I know we're almost out of time, mm -hmm. right? Do you, are you okay with the next episode we have? If we start breaking, I know we talked about a couple of examples, but we start breaking this down and look at ways how people can kind of like take baby steps, tread carefully, to try, you know, to start chipping away at this yeah. block? I, I think that would be good to talk about. I, you know, I'll bring up the one of the terms now. So opposite of a limiting mindset would be a growth mindset, mm -hmm. right? So we, we can talk about how you shift your perspective and your thoughts and your beliefs from limitations to growth. And I, I, I think that, that would be good to, to figure out what that looks like. Agreed. Good, good discussion, good discussion. We'll take it there. We'll take it to that next step next time. All right. Well, thank you, Mo, for, uh, for coming you down. You are very welcome. And uh, thank, thank you. you to the, everyone that helped put this podcast together. Yes, Your thank you. Your amazing team. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so we can wrap it up? Yes, sir. So let me just uh, read this out. Uh, thank you all for listening to this episode of Back to Basics. 
on the Business Edge brought to you by Feliciano School of Business at Montclair State University. We hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you have any feedback or ideas for future podcasts for us, we're all ears. Thank you. Thank you, George. See you next time. Take care. Awesome. Thank you.